What's the word? Let's talk about it. Game number four is a wrap, and it was finally a close good game in the NBA Finals. Good thing, man. 2-2 series going back to Phoenix. Whoever wins game number five probably will end up winning this series, so it is the most crucial game of the entire thing. Let's talk about it, man. Starting off with Devin Booker. What a performance. Last game, he had 10 total points. And the first couple minutes in game number four, he had 12. I don't know how many he had in the actual first quarter, but he had 12 in the first couple minutes of the, of the first quarter. Then the third quarter, he completely took over. Final stat line is this. 17 for 28 from the field. That's 60%. He, did, he had 42 points with zero made threes. He hit eight of his nine free throws. He had two assists and eight total fouls. Eight of them, thanks. Yep. <laughs> I mean, he only got called for for, I guess five of them, but yeah, eight of them. Thanks. And uh, uh, let's talk about it because the officiating is probably going to be the talk of this entire game because in my mind, it was one of the worst officiated games I've seen in a long time. Now, listen, if, you, if you've been watching these recaps, it's very rare that I talk about officiating because I understand officiating is very, very hard. You have to make a split decision on whether or not that contact was deemed a foul. You have to make the decision. And because of that, I'm typically pretty lenient and, and trying to side with the referees because I know you're going to miss calls here and there. You're going to call fouls that weren't necessarily there. It is hard. One of my favorite accounts on Twitter is called like Ump Scorecards because in baseball, you can kind of determine... A good officiated game versus a bad officiated game. And that's by, this was a ball. This was a strike. And I like to see this ump had a 99.5% success rate when calling balls of strikes. You can't really do that in basketball. So I'm typically pretty lenient. Today was terrible. Talk about the Devin Booker on Drew Holiday foul. There is no world where I see three officials watching this play on the ball and not a single one of them, not a single one of them call that foul. He literally cuffed the man while he was in midair. And luckily for the Bucs, they get out of here with a victory because it would have been terrible for not just the Bucs, but for the entire NBA, for the product of the NBA, if the Suns would have went on to win this game because Devin Booker took over in the fourth quarter after he should have got a sixth foul, he had a game winner or something. It would have been terrible for the league. Because at the end of the day, that missed call could have been very, very crucial to not just this game, but the entire series. The NBA has to fix things. And I'm not just talking about missing the call here and there. One, one of the reasons I've really been enjoying the Olympic um, um, exhibition games is because you can see, at least in game number one against Nigeria, the NBA team or the USA team was really trying to bait fouls. And then the international referees like, nope, you, you're not getting away with, with going into your defender to try to draw a foul. And I know they said this offseason they're going to try to put together this plan to try to get rid of those me trying to draw the fan of foul things. It needs to happen because it, I think it will just overall help the product of the NBA. And then we get less times when we talk about bad officiated games. Because when you have foul baiting, you're going to fall for it. And then the replay shows the millions of people at home that it wasn't really a foul. And you get rid of all of that, then it's better officiated game and a better product because we don't really like free throws as NBA fans. This game, we had 29 free throws on the uh, the Bucks side and then 19 free throws on the Sun side. So that's a decent amount of free throws, but I didn't feel like it was an overwhelming um, amount of uh, free throws. But you got to get better for game number five because a phantom, a missed call like that can legitimately, legitimately change the entire game. Let's talk about the Bucks though. The Bucks put together... A defensive masterpiece again they gave up 103 points and almost half of that was Devin Booker for second game in a row they just they uh shut out DeAndre Aiden DeAndre Aiden was very very good in those first two games and since then coach Bud has put together the system to prevent DeAndre Aiden from being a dominant force they even gone small ball and DeAndre Aiden hasn't been able to figure it out just yet um, DeAndre Aiden three for nine and no free throw attempts and again that, that's one of my biggest things about DeAndre Aiden I always say he has soft hands and he doesn't get to the free throw line as much as a guy like him should and especially going against a team that is going small ball a lot of it I would love for seeing him to get to the free throw line even more second game in a row my boy Mikael Bridges didn't come out and it was it, he wasn't bad tonight by any means but he didn't really have a positive impact on this game and Chris Paul biggest Chris Paul fan here but I always keep it real he choked in this game you know Chris Paul, one of the things we say about Chris Paul is he is maybe the best point guard of all time when it comes to protecting that pill, protecting that ball. And in the most in the most crucial possession of his NBA career so far, he turned it over. And not even just that, final stat line looks like this. Five from 13 from the field, 
0 for 2 from, from the 3, not a single free throw attempt, 10 points, 7 assists, 5 turnovers. Earlier in this, this, this run, and one of the reasons why the Suns have been so good throughout this playoffs is because Chris Paul teams typically don't turn the ball over much. In the last couple games of this series, Chris Paul has been a, he's he's been turning the ball over like crazy. That's not him. So I'm giving that to, of course, the Milwaukee Bucks defense, making it so difficult for Chris Paul to do his thing. Through the first two games, we were talking about how they have been able to, to really maximize the pick and roll with Chris Paul and Devin Booker. And a lot of that has gone to to the wayside when it comes to the Chris Paul. Now, again, Devin Booker had 42 of them things, so I'm not saying his his offense production stepped up in this game, but Chris Paul in this one, where, where Devin Booker and the Phoenix Suns needed a secondary star, Chris Paul wasn't there for the squad. And, and you know what? Through the first three games, he had been the, the finals MVP. I mean, of course, if the Suns were to win, obviously. Um, he had been the finals MVP for the Suns if they went on to win. And after a performance like this, He's going to have to really, if they're going to win this series, and him to win Finals MVP, he really has to pick it up in those next two wins. That's if they <laughs> that's if they win this series. That's if they win this series. Obviously, they shortened their rotation heavily because last game, um, with no Dario Saric, we saw like 13 or so minutes of Frank Kaminsky, and that was dreadful. So, Monty Williams um, made it a point to not play Frank Kaminsky, and that was a good decision. But ultimately, it wasn't enough because on the other side of the Milwaukee Bucks, cash money Chris was there. A 40-piece. A quick 40 piece. And in that fourth quarter, the cash money Greek freak combination was ridiculous. You know what was a very, very good call? It don't really have the same ring to it as blocked by James, but the block by Giannis, blocked by Onto the Kupo on DeAndre Aiden. If they win this series, that is the play of the entire thing. One minute left trying to get rid of that momentum. An easy lob play that is drawn up for DeAndre Aiden is stuffed because of Giannis's ability to just recognize defenses or recognize offense on the defensive side of the ball and blocks it and they go on to score a basket. That is the biggest play of the final so far. Giannis didn't have the 40 points like he had the last two games, but we still had a ridiculously dominant performance on both sides of the ball. If you get two... Out of their top three players to have a good game, it's hard to stop the Milwaukee Bucks. Drew Holiday had a lot of moments, and it's me and the guys. It's two, four, six, seven. It's it was eight of us. <laughs> Watch. I think we all just want a good series, and and this was this was the best game so far. Drew Holiday had that play where he had an offensive rebound, but instead of coming down with the rebound, he tried to just immediately throw it right back up. Just just blew all of our minds. It's just like I think Drew needs to take a step back and just slow down a little bit. Luckily, he didn't hurt the team today. If anything, his defense was really good. His defense was better than some of the other games in the series. I can't really say really good. His defense was better than some of the other games in the series. Um, and and listen, they did it. P.J. Tucker attempted one shot, had five fouls, but his impact definitely was there on the defensive side of the ball. It just was. It just was. I man, we're 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 putting together a classic series, and I hope that the next couple games are similar to this and not the first three in the sense that we have a close game. Because through the first three games of this series, brother, I had been starting to record these recaps before the game was even over. That's how much of a blowout it was. And this one came down to the last couple possessions, which is amazing. Now, they say the series doesn't start. They say the series doesn't start until a home team loses, so technically nothing has happened. Again, I know I said it last time, but it's still true. But game number five is the real deal. Game number five is the real deal. And the Milwaukee Bucks have a ton of momentum. Through the last two games, being able to, to shut down DeAndre Aiden, to cause Chris Paul to turn the ball over, and for Chris Middleton to wake up is amazing, is an amazing amount of, of whatever you want to call it to go into game, momentum to go into game number five. Now, I would love to take a look at Chris Middleton's home versus away stats in the playoffs. Um, home versus away stats. Let's see if I can get it on the fly without going too deep. It's going it's to be Stat Muse. Stat Muse. See, I love this account. Um, so, so far in the playoffs, at home, Chris Middleton has averages, have his 25 points per game. 
on 47% shooting and then 38% from three. All-star, very, very great numbers at home. But on the road, he averages 22 points per game, which is still good. His efficiency goes down, though, to 40% from the field and 31% from three. So, obviously, he's a better home player than away player. They need a great away game from Chris Middleton. Also, on the road, it says his plus-minus is minus 24. I know plus-minus is not the greatest statistic to prove anything, Um but when you compare it to his plus 128 at home, it may tell a little bit of story of how difficult or different Chris Middleton is on the road. I wonder about Drew Holiday because at the end of the day, we can expect the dominant performance from Giannis is what he's been doing this entire playoff run, this entire playoffs uh, or this entire finals. He's been doing that. You need at least one of the others to step up. And well, um, this is even worse for Drew Holiday. On the road, Drew Holiday is shooting 36% from the field or 37% from the field on 15 points. Not acceptable for uh, for Drew Holiday, honestly. So you need one of those guys to step up if Milwaukee wants to take game number five. I do believe that momentum and the crowd is a real thing. And I know the Phoenix fans are going to pack out the house. Phoenix Suns fans should not feel like the series is over just because they're, they don't have the momentum and they lost two in a row. Because I'm telling you, home court advantage is a real deal. You know, maybe last year wasn't because there wasn't fans, but what we've seen through this series, at least the home team has always won. So it has to have something to do with the crowd. Let me know what you think about this game, man. Game number four definitely was a classic block by Ata the Kumpo. We're going to hear that over and over if they win this finals, man. Appreciate y'all.